out on the course at the moment a young Spanish rider extremely good he rode exceptionally well in the cap die earlier in the year it takes a lot of risks this course is suiting him at the moment he's doing great times out on the course we have to wait till he comes down the best time at the moment in fact is six minutes and 12 seconds of Christian Talaferra from France but it looks to me as if the man from Spain is doing a great job you see the difference here between the men and the women. The men really have geared themselves up for this part of the course. They've got a slightly bigger gear on to keep the speed up. Average speed at the moment is 44 kilometers an hour for the fastest rider, and I think that may well fall before the end of the day. Superb crowd out here. There's the banner that they all wait for. Look at the time, 6.03. The time to beat is 6.12, and it may well be that he's going to come inside that. He gives every last little bit of energy as he comes down to the line. There it is, 6 minutes and 10 seconds. That's good enough for top place at the moment. Well, he'll be happy with that. The man from Barcelona in Spain speaks superb English. In fact, like a lot of these mountain bikers, spends an awful lot of time in America. Next man in the starting block, Scott Sharples of Australia. Obviously thinking about what's going to happen next year when the World Championships moves to Cairns into the tropical heat of the Southern Hemisphere. Well, he's off. Good start. Look at that. He really piles on the pressure as he goes out of the starting blocks there. Well, we're on the tricky part of the course here. Half distance at the moment. Look at that time on the right-hand side. 3.53. That's the second best time so far. Let's not forget the Spanish rider has gone through with the best time of 3.52. So he's really up in the leaderboard at the moment. As he comes through here, you get a chance to see how much these bikes really do get thrown around. Most of these bikes in the range in about $5,000. And they can only be used for this specific discipline because, as we've said before, they're very special bicycles these riders use these days. Again, he flicks across to the left-hand side of the screen there. That road there is a little bit harder. Picks up as much speed as he can. He's doing a great ride at the moment. Well, that's a very clever move. The first rider I've seen so far jumping onto the tarmac there, just again to pick up a little bit more speed before we go into this straight part of road section. Disappears into the crowd there. They really have got behind the riders. It doesn't matter where these riders have come from all over the world, but the crowd pushing them onto the occasion and this is exactly what the riders will see this recorded yesterday when the riders were practicing on the course it gives you an idea of exactly how fast and how dangerous this course is obviously when they're racing they're starting in a time trial situation they're starting at one and a half minute intervals but they won't be quite as bunched up as these guys here well down on the finish line everybody waiting for the arrival of Scott Sharples he's got the second best time so far at half distance time to beat will be six minutes and ten seconds that of Tommy Misser, the Spanish rider who everyone here was expecting to finish in the top ten, but really has walked across the top of the leaderboard at the moment. There's the Australian coming now through the Hutchinson barrier. That's what they all look for. They know then they've got to give every last little bit of energy coming down to the line. He's got a good one. Six minutes, 11 seconds. That's good enough for second place at the moment. He'll be happy with that. Excellent ride by Scott Sharples of Australia. That'll put him in second place at the moment, but there's some very fast riders to come at the moment. Well, this is number one, the man who was world champion last year, Francois Gachet. 29 years of age, regarded by most as the best downhill man in the world, but he could get pushed very closely to the finish line by his teammate and protégé, Nicolas Vouillet. Well, look at that start. He's giving everything. This man will have warmed himself up. He knows exactly what he has to do today. He knows that he's got a teammate chasing him, and he's taking all the risks. Look at the speed. The speed is almost totally different to what we've seen so far today. He threw his bike around that corner. 3.48 was the split time there. Almost 40 seconds faster than the fastest lady. Well, here he comes. A foot down there just to control a little bit. He's riding exceptionally well. Best time so far at the midway split. He's going around these corners like a man possessed. He throws it around that corner. I thought he was going to lose it for a moment there. What an experience. You see how he's flicked across to the left-hand side of the road. The road is getting a little bit harder there, so you can pick up just that little bit of speed as you come down to the straightest part of the course. A tuck position there. Then he get down into a little bit of aerodynamics just to save his breath a little bit, just to save that last little bit of energy because he knows over the last couple of corners he will need that to accelerate to keep the speed up. 45, 46 kilometers an hour is the speed that this man is doing at the moment. 
a chance here just to see exactly what these riders have to face. You see how he tries to flick his bicycle over the obstacles. There have been an awful lot of punctures out on the course today. And when the bike is bouncing around like this a lot, what can happen, in fact, is a chain can come off. And these riders have special chain guards. And if your chain comes off, then the day is over for you. But this man is one of the best in the world, if not the best in the world. And you see the control. He flicks it round that corner. But it looks to me as if he's got a little bit of difficulty trying to pick up the speed. Also a chance here as he goes through the hop, a very technical part of the course here, to see the total difference between these bicycles and the bicycles that the riders will use tomorrow in the cross country. Nowadays, there is a total different breed of downhill bicycle. They're nearly all hydraulic front and rear. The crowd here waiting for the man that they know is the fastest man in the world. He wears number one. This is what he's got to do. He's coming through here. Six minutes and ten seconds of Thomas Misser, the Spanish rider. Look at this. He's well inside. He's pushing all the way down to the line. He's going to get the best time. Six minutes flat. That is ten seconds faster than the Spaniard. He goes top of the leaderboard. And the crowd know that this man is fantastic. You can hear them rising to him. There are a lot of French people come over here. We're not too far from Strasbourg and the French border. But now he has to wait for about a minute and a half to see if he can be the world champion for the second year running. This may well be the man that can push him off. Look at this rider's pedigree. 19 years of age and already he's been three times world champion. Great start by Vouillet, the man who won Cap Die this year. He really went down that mountain. An incredible descent down in the Côte south of France there. Very difficult, very dangerous. Not like today's course, but if you're a good downhill man, you can take to any kind of surf. Look at the way he flicks his bike around that corner. The same way as the man who preceded him. He's using the left shoulder of the road here, picking up as much speed as possible. Into the tuck position, getting that speed up again. 45, 50 kilometers an hour. As he went through the halfway time there, they were almost in the same time. It could well go down to one or two of these French riders, but don't forget, Mike King is out there, the man on the comeback, the American, who in 1993 was the world champion. Last year was out with a broken collarbone, but this is Nicolas Vouillet, and look at the difference. He is so much smoother as he goes over that difficult part of the course here. Very rutted, a lot of roots, a lot of stones there, but you have to have total control when you come into this corner. Look at that. You see how he picks his speed up so much quicker than his teammate did. This may well be where he could pick up one or two seconds, and at this level of the sport, that is all you need. The crowd are quiet. They're waiting for this man to come down. You see the way that bike is vibrating at the front. You can see the work on those hydraulic forks. They're pushing up and down. They really are giving him a battering. You see how the downhillers have a much lower position as well than the cross-country riders. They need that to give them a little bit more stability, especially when they flick around these corners. Look at the crowd today. Unbelievable. Waiting down on the finish line. This is Gachet. He knows now he has to wait to see what the young protégé can do. We're coming up to the line. Six minutes flat is the time to beat. We realize that, and it's going to be very close on the line. 57, five minutes, 57, 98, one is the position that he will go today and look at that one man I think might still be able to beat him that's Mike King but you know I think we've seen the end of Francois Gachet even so he's still going to be in second position at the moment and this is the man 1993 world champion he went out last year he broke his collarbone came back at the end of the year and won one of the downhill races in America but this year he's had a little bit of a hard time although he has been consistent he was second overall in the World Cup he's a great rider great performer he could well upset the French today look at the way he throws his bicycle around these corners foot out there to control a lot of control there being lost and you see now he is coming down the middle this is where he'll lose a bit of speed both of the Frenchmen went on the hard shoulder towards the left he's pedaling all the way keeping his speed up well he's about three or four seconds down on the two Frenchmen at the halfway check but he's still giving everything this race can be won and lost in the final few corners Superb crowd have come out to watch this event today. I don't think the organizers expected this. They were looking for 30,000, and maybe they've got 50. Well, this is Mike King. 
coming down there still very controlled he's already got his left hand foot out you see what he wants to have that foot out for is to control it'll go down in case of a problem locks up his back wheel they know this corner they've ridden this course four or five times this week you see there how low he is and then he just gets out of the saddle to accelerate and bring himself back up to speed King now got his knees out a little bit. There's his foot just to control. This is the this is the hop, a very difficult part of the course. A lot of riders losing time on this part. And you have to be in total control. You have to get your feet back into the clipless pedals which these riders have, based on the same thing as the ski bindings. The crowd are waiting now. The two Frenchmen down on the finish line. First and second overall at the moment. They know this man can beat them. That's the time. He's outside the time of the second place Frenchman, but can he get third? He's coming to the line. He's giving everything he's got. 6.05, 6.06, 6.07. Third place for Mike King. Well, he won't be too dissatisfied with that because he has been bitten by the two best downhillers in the world. But I don't think he'd be too disappointed with that ride because let's not forget that last year was almost a lost year for Mike King when he was out with that broken collarbone and he's come back from a long way. Well, the best placed German rider at the moment is Jürgen Benecker. In fact, he hails from here in Freiburg, but this man may well be able to push him off the top. This is Christian Lemmetz, and he's coming through with a good time. 6.13 is good enough for seventh, and in fact, he'll push his teammate down one slot into eighth place. Well, you can hear the disappointment of the crowd. They wanted Jürgen Benecker to be the top placed German tonight, but Morten Jentegaard is doing a superb ride out here on the course comes down here to the bunny hop and this is a difficult point to negotiate if you get it wrong you have a 45 to 50 foot drop on the other side and then you miss all of these corners you see he's taken that so badly and as he comes through the cut there you see he's jumping and trying to avoid all the obstacles but he's losing time all the way down to the finish line there he was eventually finished in seventh place but the top three in this year's world mountain bike championships downhill will be third mike king Second, Francois Gachet, and first, Nicolas Vouillet, world champion for the fourth consecutive year. Well, some dramatic racing to bring day one of the World Mountain Bike Championships to a close, and two great champions from either side of the Atlantic. Day two takes us just one kilometre away to the other side of the valley for the start of the men's and women's cross-country championships. The course they face will be eight and a half kilometers and it gives them a chance to try all of their skills.